If you work in any of these roles, forecasting is one of the most important skills you can learn. An accurate forecast can help you save money, boost productivity, and even increase customer satisfaction. So let me show you all the steps you need to create precise forecasts in Excel. First up, suppose that we work for a hotel group as analysts and we've been given this data over here that has all of these dates on a quarterly basis every three months and we also have the sales on the side. With that, we want to try to find what our sales are going to be for these next two years. Typically, this would require some complex statistics, but luckily in Excel, we have the forecast function. And if you wanna download this Excel file to follow along, you can do so for free in the video description. So let's get started here by typing equals forecast. The first one we look at is this forecast.linear function. Hit the top key there, and the X is the date we want the prediction for, which is this date right here, comma, the known YS is the dependent data, which in our case is all of the sales here. We'll lock that by pressing the F4 key so it doesn't move as we move the formula down, comma, and the known independent variable are all of the dates here, control shift down, and press the F4 key to lock that as well. We can close that parenthesis and hit enter, and now drag that down by double clicking. Make this a bit better by adding the comma and removing the decimal places. Here we've followed what's known as a linear trend and we can plot it into a chart just to see what that looks like by going to the recommended charts and I'm just gonna go for this basic line chart. You can see that's pretty much a straight line going up but if we compare that to our historical data we can also create another line chart for that just over here you can see it doesn't actually look the same. In fact, this historical data has a lot of up and downs while the linear one just has a straight line. When we think about this, as it's a hotel resort business, in the summer months it goes up and then in the winter months it goes back down. That's not really being accounted for in this linear forecast. So you might wonder, is there a way for us to account for the seasonality so we have a more accurate forecast? And luckily there is, we type equals forecast here it's going to be the dot ETS function. The ETS here stands for exponential triple smoothing. It's not something you need to know much about, but it typically helps with time series data that has seasonality, as is our case. So we'll select that one, and the target date is going to be this forecast date, comma, and the values are all our historical sales. Again, we'll lock that with the F4 key, and the timeline is the historical timeline, F4 key again. You'll notice we have these other options in the square brackets. That means that they're optional. So we're not really going to add anything and leave it in the default. Hit enter here and then let's double click on this side to drag it all the way to the bottom. We'll call this one up over here seasonal. And now we can compare these two methods, the linear and the seasonal, just by going to insert. And let me just select a line chart. Now you can see there's quite a big difference. The orange one is clearly accounting for the seasonality while the linear one just stays straight throughout. Now that we know there is some seasonality, it would be nice to know how long these cycles are for. So over here, what we can do is type forecast again, and this time we're gonna go for forecast.ets.seasonality. Hit the tab key there, and all we want are the historical sales values over here, comma, and the timeline is going to be our historical dates. Close those parentheses and hit enter. We get an answer of four here, and as this is on a quarterly basis, it's basically saying every year we can expect to see a similar cycle. If the data was on a monthly basis, this would be four months, but in our case, it's four quarters. With this information, we can consider hiring seasonal workers in the summer months when there's a bit of a peak, or even offering discounts in the winter months when there's not much occupancy. If you're looking to apply these concepts to financial modeling, like forecasting the share price of a company, I'd recommend you check out our complete finance and valuation course, where you'll learn all the essentials of accounting, finance, valuation, and financial modeling in Excel. In the course, first we cover financial statement analysis, using Apple's real annual report as an example. Then we get into financial modeling through a three statement model on Apple. After that, we begin the valuation phase where we learn to do a discounted cash flow, a comparable company's valuation, 
and a precedent transactions valuation on Adobe, looking at the real financial statements to eventually derive a valuation range. Lastly, we'll show you how to present your findings in a stock pitch format. We also have a career track called the Investment Banker Program, which includes not just the Finance and Valuation course, but also four other courses designed to make you stand out as an investment banker. So if you're interested in checking these out, head over to the link in the description below. Alright, back to the video. At this point, you might wonder, how confident are we that we're going to hit these numbers that Excel is proposing? Is this a guarantee or is there some room for error here? That's where the forecast.ets.confined function comes handy. This function gives us the confidence interval for a forecasted value, so you can say it's 95% confident that the value is going to fall within a certain range. So let's go ahead and give that a try. Now the target date is this date right here, comma. The values are the sales values right here, and let's press the F4 key to fix that, comma. And the timeline is this timeline over here, F4 key again. And you'll notice we now have this confidence interval. This is actually an optional argument. If we leave it blank, it's gonna resort to the default of 95%. Let's just put 95 in here manually for now and hit enter. Let's drag that all the way down. So what is this number actually saying? The 32,000 tells us that the sales are likely to fall within the range of up by 32,000 or down by 32,000. So really the upper bound is going to be the seasonal amount plus this 32,000 and then the lower bound is going to be the seasonal amount minus the 32,000. The reason we're linking it to the seasonal amount instead of let's say the linear one is because this function by default is accounting for seasonality. Let's go ahead and drag these two down and the first one is going to be the upper bound and then this is the lower bound. From here we could change things like the confidence level from 95 to say 99% so it's almost guaranteed that it's gonna fall within this range. As soon as we do that, you notice that the range actually goes up. That makes sense as it needs to have a bigger range to be more accurate. On the flip side, if we change that to say a 90% level of accuracy, you can see that these ranges are going to go down by quite a lot. That said, at 90%, there's obviously a higher likelihood that the value doesn't fall within the range. Having this type of range is really useful because we can have both an optimistic scenario and a more conservative one. So far, we've been looking at this through formulas, but you'll be surprised to know there's actually an easier method, which is the forecast sheet. Let's take a look at it. First, we'll select all of this data. You can do that with the mouse manually. And then we'll head over to data and all the way to the right, click on the forecast sheet. When you do that, you'll get this chart pop up that has a line chart in blue. This is our historical data. And then in orange, in the thick orange one, we have our forecasted data alongside the upper and lower bounds of confidence. What's nice about this is that we can further customize it. So here we have the options and we can choose things like the forecast end date. We can also choose the confidence interval amount. So you can see the percentage here, whether we want seasonality and much more. For now, we'll just click on create and you'll notice it generates a new sheet. We have the historical data over here, which is the same as before. But then as we look down towards the bottom half, you can see we're actually using the same formulas we used earlier with the forecast ETS here and then the forecast confidence over here for the lower bound and right next to that for the upper bound too. Alongside that, we're going to generate this type of visual which is the same one we were seeing in the preview. So while the forecast functions might give you a bit more flexibility, the forecast sheet is definitely the faster method. If you want to learn more about forecasting, specifically to find out the share price of a company, check out this video over here on the valuation methods or take our complete finance and valuation course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you the next one.